Welcome back, everyone. I'd like to take the opportunity to say thanks for sticking with me and listening up. Uh, I apologize profusely for the last video. Uh, hopefully I got the audio a little bit better. My microphone, it turns out, is incredibly sensitive and it picks up the slightest little sounds. And because of that, there's a lot of static and crackling. I've been able to eliminate as much of it as I think I can through a lot of different processes, but this might be as good as the audio gets. Uh, I'll still keep fidgeting with it, but I got to, in the meantime, got to teach. So we're going to start with section 913 of the brain now. 913 is actually the rest of your notes for this unit, and it's spread out into a bunch of different parts. So um, I'll break it up into different chunks. Whatever I cover as far as uh, a PowerPoint or a, a video goes, I'm hoping that that will end up correlating to what the quizzes match. That's what I'm checking right now in my notes here, seeing if it all correlates or where I need to stop to make sure I've covered everything that will show up on the quizzes that I do. All right, yeah, that's good. Okay. So, the three major parts of the brain, as you, know, you can see here, it's not very difficult to figure out. They are the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brain stem. The cerebrum is this top portion of the brain. All right? It contains a, a central fissure that goes down the middle of it. If it was turned, you could see that. It contains all the lobes of the brain that we often talk about, like the occipital, parietal, uh, frontal, temporal. All of those lobes are the cerebrum. The cerebellum sits underneath the occipital lobe, which is right here. And we'll get into what it does in a minute. And then the brainstem actually connects into and up into the brain. And there you go. If we look at it from this way, this is your cerebrum. Like I said, there are there is a fissure going right down the middle, separating your brain into a right and a left side. Your cerebrum is responsible for your higher mental function. Um, it's what allows us to solve problems, gives us our memory, our reasoning. Uh, it helps with sight and hearing. All of those senses that you have come from the cerebrum itself. The cerebellum is what kind of gives you its balance. It's what allows you to have coordination. So if you're a very uncoordinated individual, you can blame your cerebellum there. Now, the cerebellum has a lot of white matter. And if you look at it really closely, you can see that it branches off. And those branches kind of look like a tree. So they call those branches arbor vitae. And then the rest of the stuff that's not white that you see there, that's gray matter. And yeah. You'll need to add Arbor Vitae to your notes at the very bottom of the page under the cellar bell in there. Just kind of put Arbor Vitae and then write a little definition. It's the tree-like appearances there that show up. All right. So if we, ah, wrong way. There we go. If we scoot forward to the next slide, we get the brain stem. Your brain stem, nice and pretty colored here, all right. It contains several different portions. If you're to look at it in real life, it's like, oh, hey, I can't really figure that out because they're not color coded in real life. Uh, I wish they were. But your brainstem is what is responsible for your autonomic system. It's what takes control of all the things that you have no control over. All right. And so you can see there's a lot of different parts to it. We're actually going to cover all of those as we go at some point. And so if you look at your cerebral hemispheres, obviously there's a right side and a left side. And each side we consider a hemisphere. So your cerebral hemisphere is left and right. And then that gap going right down the middle is called the longitudinal fissure. All right. Now, scientists have kind of gotten into this. There's not really a left and a right, hand, right side of the brain that they all work together. And yes, that is correct. But the... They have been able to figure out that certain tasks will light up certain portions of the brain more. 
And so they've kind of figured out that speech, language processing, comprehension, and logical reasoning are found on the left-hand side of the brain. And then your spatial tasks, vision independence, recognition, that's recognizing things by touch instead of sight. So if you closed your eyes and picked something up and could tell what it is, that's a spatial task. And they say that is more the right side of the brain. I think they're trying to get away from this right and left side and just really stick to the fact that the brain as a whole is responsible for everything you do. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. On your notes, I do want you to put that there's a, a lot, right, basically write this whole thing in your notes. Um, left and right side separated by the longitudinal fissure. And then write down, so you don't need to write this first one, I guess, but then have this stuff in your notes as well for number one under the describe the functions on your notes. The next one, number two on your notes there, is called the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum connects the two sides of the brain together. It's, it's this sheet. If you were to cut away the brain section right here and you go down far enough, you'll see that there's this, it almost looks like tendon, but it's not. And it stretches up and it connects the right side and the left side together. It's like a, think of it as a, a freeway, a really big freeway where all thoughts and stuffs are able to pass across it and communicate really well. It's a wide, flat bundle of neuro, neural fibers. And if this guy gets separated, you have some huge problems because the left and right side cannot communicate with each other. It causes a bunch of issues in as far as neural thinking goes. If you were to cut down the longitudinal fissure like this and take a look at it from the side, this is what it looks like in real life. It's this circular thing. It looks almost like a deflated balloon there. That is your corpus callosum. Uh, for your notes, you just need to write that right there. Another look at your co corpus callosum up front. This is the brain looking at you. They just took a nice, good slice straight down. And you can see your corpus callosum right there. All right. And it... If you look over here, it loops down, so it comes up, around, and down like that. This is actually connecting up into here and coming down is your brainstem that we'll get to in a little bit. Now, when we talk about the shape of the brain, we have to take into account all of those little squiggly lines. Um, those squiggly lines are actually there for a purpose. They create more surface area. And more surface area means more packed neurons, which means more ability to have intelligence. And so we talk about the outer section of this brain. That is your cer cerebral cortex. It's very wrinkled. That's what the word convoluted means. Well, it's not what it means, but whatever. All right, so the maximum amount of gray matter um, is actually your brain neurons that fit inside the skull. And those convolutions are sulcus and gyrus. Now, if you're talking about um, multiple, it would be sulci and gyri. And so the sulcus are the grooves and fissures are often used interchangeably with them. And then the gyri are the bumps or raised ridges of the brain. So if you look here, you can see this gap that comes down. That's your sulcus. The bump that is formed by that would be your gyrus. So you would have the gyrus on top and then the sides, that crack that represents it is your sulci. Um... On your notes for convolutions, I wrote wrinkles and grooves, separates lobes. For sulcus, I wrote shallow groove, and gyrus, I wrote bumps. 
All right, so I had to pause it for a second there and take care of some business here. Um, moving on, the fissures are actually the deeper grooves in the brain. They're deeper than sulci, but especially like there's a, uh, a fissure that comes down here that is often called a sulcus instead, and it drives me nuts, but whatever. All right. Transverse fissures are what separate your cerebrum from your cere cerebellum. So it's this gap right here that separates this whole thing from your cerebellum and brainstem there, basically. Your lateral fissure separates your temporal lobe from the frontal and parietal lobes. So you've got the lateral fissure right here. Um, and then if you look, this is what I'm talking about. It's a fissure, yet they're calling it a sulcus here. It drives me nuts. All right. And then the longitudinal fissure is what separates the left and right hemispheres. That's just basically, I wrote these straight down in my notes for number four on your page there. All right. The last thing on your notes is this right here. You do need to know and memorize this diagram. I know when I give you quizzes, you're just going to cheat and use this diagram to answer the questions. But if you do come back to school, I'll give you a test where you won't be able to use your notes. So you need to learn. The whole point is to learn it anyway. So might as well get down to it now. And let's make sure that, yeah, we'll get into the lobes of the brain. So your quiz, your quiz number two is going to start right here with this guy and, or end right there with that guy. And it starts up here with the brain section 913. All right, as always, thanks for listening, and let me know if you have any questions. You can always put stuff in the comments if you need. Just be kind and nice. All right, have a nice day.